So far, we've been working exclusively in the MATLAB command window, and while your commands have been recorded in the command history, you may be wondering, well, how do I save work that I've done on a problem so that I can reuse it later? And the way you do that in MATLAB is with what are called script and M files, and that's going to be the focus of this video. Our objectives are to understand that a MATLAB script is simply a list of commands executed sequentially. In other words, the same things you would type in the command window, but they're executed all at once sequentially. We want to learn how to write and run a script M file, use the debug tools to execute a script line by line, like it would be executed if you were typing things in the command window, use help comments effectively to document what our scripts are doing, and get a brief introduction to MATLAB's help system. So what is a script? A script is simply a list of MATLAB commands. You'll see these commands here should look familiar. These are from the triangle example last week. So we have just a list of commands and I've actually, to generate this, I copy pasted these from the history while well, in a MATLAB session. One thing you'll notice here is a bunch of warnings. That orange highlight there is a warning. What MATLAB is telling us with all these warnings is to suppress output. And you'll recall from the from last week that the way that we can suppress output is with a semicolon. I haven't done that here because I've just copied those commands exactly as we've used them. Normally when we're writing a script we will suppress most of the output except for results that we're interested in. So when you write a script this happens in a new window called the editor window and we'll talk about how we can access the editor window next. So from within MATLAB to get to the editor window you can click this button which is for a new M file. They're called M files by the way because they have a .m as the file extension. you'll notice that if you've been working with the homework one template that's actually a script M file. So we can click that button for new M file or we can select file um, new M file under the file menu and that brings up the editor window. So the editor window looks like this and we can enter commands by typing them directly which we'll do a lot if we really are certain what we're doing because it's quicker or by figuring out the problem in the command window and then copy pasting from the command history to build our script M file. So we enter all these commands we might have some comments and we'll talk more about this in a minute some comments to kind of keep track of what we're doing and then eventually we're going to want to run the script. So once we've got all the commands entered in the editor window and we're ready to run it and have MATLAB execute the commands, we have a couple options to do this. Before you go to run the script M file, you need to make sure that the current folder, remember the current folder window in the main MATLAB interface, we want to make sure that current folder window is where you've saved your script M file. Once you've done that, you can try running it a number of ways. One is you can type the name of the file at the command prompt or in another script since commands in a script are like typing at the command prompt. So for example, this script is called triangle and it's available with the lecture notes and you can try playing with it. Another thing you can do is from within the M file editor, you can click the run button, which is this button right here. And that will run the M file. 
A third option is to double click on the file name in the current folder window. So you'll see the file listed in the current folder window if it's pointing to the right place. And um, you can just double click on that. All three of these options do the same thing. They execute all commands in the script sequentially, which means in the order that they're typed in the script. Sometimes you want to be able to execute commands in the script one command at a time, just like you're doing in the command window. For example, when you're doing what we call debugging, um, debugging is when you've got a script with a whole bunch of commands happening at once and it's not doing exactly what you expect it to and you want to figure out what's wrong and how do you fix it. One way to do that is to execute one command at a time and the way to do that is the following. First we set a breakpoint. So we can set a breakpoint that's what that red circle is and to set a breakpoint we simply click the mouse on that dash at the line number where we want the breakpoint. So once we've set that breakpoint, then we run the script. Again, running the script with the run button, which is grayed out here, you can, or any of the other three ways I talked about it on the previous slide. Once you run the script, the script will execute all of the commands up to the breakpoint. So in this example, the script has already executed lines three, five, and six, and the breakpoint is set at line seven, which means that it is just about to execute line, line seven. To execute line seven, we'll use the command step forward, which is F10 on the keyboard, or it's also this button. These are the debug tools. And that is the step button. So we can step forward and in this image right here I've stepped forward three commands and this little green arrow indicates the command we are about to execute. So as soon as I would click step or press F10 that command H equals A sign a times sine D of alpha would be executed. So one of the things you're often trying to do when you're running a script one command at a time and debugging it is to figure out why you're getting some errors in your script. So you've probably experienced some errors as you've been, work as you've been working with MATLAB so far. There's a couple different types of errors in MATLAB. One is syntax errors. A syntax error simply means you made a mistake typing it in typing your MATLAB command. For example, in this syntax error here, here's a mathematical expression and I forgot to put this right parentheses that should go right there after the Z. So when I execute that in the command window, MATLAB returns an error and the error is telling me what's wrong. There's a possibly unbalanced parentheses. And so I can go back and look at the command and fix that. Another type of error in MATLAB we can call logic error or runtime error. And this type of error, MATLAB may not recognize when you first execute the command, particularly in a script, it won't recognize it. And we'll talk about in M files, finding errors in M files here in a minute. But at the command window, we might have an error where the syntax is correct. Syntax is correct here. But the problem is that this variable x has no value. In other words, I haven't defined x previously before trying to execute the command a equals 2 times x. So MATLAB can't execute the command because x does not have a value assigned to it. And so it just responds with an error saying that that's an undefined function or variable x. So that's what happens in the command window when we get errors. We usually find out about logic errors right away, syntax errors right away. We pretty much know there's a mistake right away. In M files, when we have a syntax error, what will happen is over on the right side of the M file, we'll get a little bar. And if you hover the mouse, 
hover the mouse pointer over that bar, you'll get a message. And in this case, similar message, that we've got invalid MATLAB syntax. And if we go back and we look at line 24, we see there's the plus sign here, but we need a number before that parenthesis. So here's our syntax error. Now, runtime errors or logic errors in a script, we might not get a message in the editor window. We might, it won't, MATLAB won't even recognize that there's something wrong. The error won't show up until we actually run the script, and then we'll get that red error message in the command window. Or, if it's really just a logic error, maybe MATLAB runs everything fine, but the problem is that the numbers we're calculating are incorrect, and that's up to us to recognize what's going on there. We may get a warning in the script editor that indicates we have an error. For example, if you never use a variable that you defined, the mfile editor will give you that warning. So that's what's over here on the right hand side. These orange items are warnings. And sometimes they're not of concern. You can hover the mouse over the orange line there and see what the warning is. In this case it was probably asking to suppress output which we didn't necessarily want to do. And uh, just experiment with that as you're working with M files. So when we're writing M files it gives us more opportunity to use comments to explain our problem solving. So here's that same triangle calculation and what I've done is gone in and added some comments to explain what's going on and I uh, also added a few semicolons to suppress output on intermediate calculations. So the first comment up here we call the help comments. And I'll talk more about that in a minute, but basically we want those first comments to explain basically what the script is doing and the help comments are really defined by all of the first comments for the first set of percent signs that indicate that comment. Once we have a space, so now here's a carriage return and a space, that means that the help comments are over. Now we might have more comments. We might use comments here for our variables, a equals 2, b equals 5, alpha equals 75. Here we're using comments to, to remind us what are the units of all of these variables. And then moving down, the other things I've changed on this script are I've added a semicolon here for h to suppress the output because that's an intermediate calculation. If you go back and recall this example, we only calculated H so that we could calculate the area of the triangle. Then I added another comment here just to explain what we're doing where we change alpha to 65 degrees and then moving on. So let's talk a little bit more about help comments. So most of the comments you will only see when you open the script and try and figure out what it's doing or remember what you did when you wrote that script. The help comments are a little different. They will actually show up as you're working with the files in MATLAB. So two ways to see the help comments. Here's that file called triangle-commented.m and if we type in the command window help triangle-commented you'll see what shows up here is the help comment. So that's what that help command in MATLAB does. It actually goes and looks for the script that's titled triangle commented in this case and then displays the help comments in the command window. The other thing that you'll notice is we see the beginning of the help comment showing up down in the current on the bottom of the current folder window when we've selected triangle commented. So that's helpful once you at 
by the halfway through this class, you'll have dozens of MATLAB script M files that you've written, and this is helpful for you to keep track of what they all do. Turns out that all of the built-in functions you're using, sine, cosine, absolute value, square root, and thousands of other built-in functions in MATLAB, they're all just M files. They're actually function M files. We'll talk about function M files in a couple weeks. But they all have help comments too, so you can access help comments for built-in functions in the same way. And this is one way to interact with the MATLAB help system. So if we type, for example, help log, maybe we can't remember if that is a natural logarithm or a base 10 logarithm, we get the help comments. And these would be all the help comments in an M file that's titled log.m and that's buried that files with your MATLAB installation and it's buried in the program files you don't need to you don't necessarily want to go in and edit that file but that's what's going on there while we're talking about the help system let's look at some other ways to find information on MATLAB functions which is the main thing you're going to be doing with the MATLAB help so we've got the help comments that we can access another thing we can do is use the function browser. You may have noticed next to your MATLAB prompt this little FX, that's the function browser. And what you can do with that, if you click on that, you can start looking for functions in MATLAB. So here's another way to find the log. So I clicked on that. This is a search box. I typed in log and here come some options. And here is the log function. Click on that, and once we click on that, now we get information about the log function so that we can use that function appropriately. So that's one way to find information about MATLAB's built-in functions. Another thing you can do is go to the help window. The help window you can access by clicking the question mark on the main toolbar in the MATLAB interface or by selecting it under the help menu. So in the help menu, help window, some things you'll find is here some documentation set. Here's more videos if you want more videos on getting started with MATLAB. You can find those here. There's a ton of videos actually built into MATLAB. Also you can search for how to do things. So the difference here, when you use the help comments in the command window, like uh, the help comments of the built-in functions, one downside of this is you need to know this. You need to know the correct syntax or spelling of the MATLAB function you're looking for information on. But in the help window, you can simply type logarithm for example and search and find all of the functions that have to do with logarithms. And the help window is going to be your main area to get information on how to do things in MATLAB. And that concludes this video.